and all of it doesn't cost a million dollars to start, you just got to start. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Practical Wealth Show. Today, we're going to talk about creating wealth through real estate. And I have my friend Jabbar, Mr. I'm Everywhere Fairweather. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and uh, this is a long time coming. So, uh, uh, Jabbar, welcome to the Practical Wealth Show. All from me going to an event that I paid the 10 grand from, but has already paid me back way back the money because I sponsored the event. And your sponsorship could be whatever you have in your pocket. You could create a sponsorship. You say, Jabbar, I like the Jabbar show. I want to sponsor your Jabbar show. Every time you speak about insurance, I'll pay you 500 bucks. Or every time you give me a client, I'll give you a, a thousand hour referral fee. I take that thousand dollars, I buy better equipment, I reinvest in branding. The shirt says the Jabbar show, the hat says the Jabbar show. When I go to my social media, this is sponsored by the Jabbar show. You, you know what I mean? Like you can build right, a whole right. company from sponsorship. It's so funny because I what I've taught or learned and taught, you know, your I teach you look, your number one asset is you, right? So what do you invest in? Your mindset, your skill set, and your network. You just got a master class of investing in your network, investing in relationships, investing in networking. Skill set is you can obviously see he's very skilled, but he's spent because we've talked about he just named off like Frank Kern, Tiago Lopez, you know, and he'll rattle off like a bunch of marketing people that if you're not really studying it, they're very Dan obscure. Kennedy. Yeah, Dan, Dan Kennedy. Kennedy, Click Funnels guys, uh, Russell Brunson, Russell Brunson, Jay Abraham, uh, you know, all. See, that's what started. See, what Ryan Dice, Ryan yeah. Dice does about thirty to forty million dollars a year from Gary marketing. Gary Halbert, that who's dead, but the, like, the one, like the old school people, right? That's it. And, uh, um, and so I'll, it's so funny cause I'll, uh, this is off topic, but I'll see people tell me they're in school and they're majoring in marketing. Right. So I'll say, well, have you ever heard Dan Kennedy? No. Have you ever no heard of, uh, newsletters. <laughs> right, you know, no, uh, you ever heard of uh, Russell Brunson? Who's the new Jack? No. Have you ever heard? I'm like, what do you study? I don't even know. You know, Look, Abraham you got, and now you have, um, what seems very good. Uh, who they probably know Grant Cardone. Some people usually don't know Grant yeah, Cardone yeah. cause he's more flashier. So it's kind of like what I tell people is you YouTube is a very powerful thing. You can go to YouTube and get an education, a college education, literally get a college education. And people are going to school. You're going to school to learn bullshit. Right. Like you, people are worried about the wrong shit. Like when it, right. someone came right. after, I remember they came after, um, what's the guy, uh, Mayweather. And I've, I have, a, I know his one of his best friends. I know he's here in Philadelphia. And I'm like, he charges $25 million as a bottom line per fight, even to this day. You want him to fight you or fight somebody in China, it's 25 million plus whatever deal he works out with a 60-40 split, his favor right. on the back end. Right. You didn't go to school to just get an education. You went to school so you could pay your debts to live, to right. make money so you could have a wife and kid or whatever you want to do. 90% of the people that go to school don't graduate with a degree that they actually use. Right. Because then when you get to your job, they didn't say, hey, we need to, we got this algebra problem for you to do. Oh, we get to your job, they go, oh, we got this science project for you to do. Oh, we got this 50 page paper we need you to write. You have a computer for that. The technology has passed you needing to have this other thing. Right. All the fact, there's just all this fact. You can go to YouTube right now and go look up Burr strategy, bigger pockets, bigger pockets, Burr strategy. And guess what's gonna pop up? A three hour or four hour class on the Burr strategy. If you follow it step by step from A to Z, you won't have to work another day in your life. You know how many people I've sent those videos to? They go, I need you to teach me mentorship. I need you this. Oh, yeah, you know, this person charged 25000 I say, well, here's a couple videos. Just follow the steps in the video. Oh, man, this is boring. It wasn't meant to be exciting or different. It's the right. steps. Right. So when you sat in school for four hours here, eight hours here, to the end of it, a four years degree, you got a bill for $200,000. And day one, you made no money except for now you're applying for jobs, which we're not even using common sense. If I'm a, a, a mechanical engineer in a mechanical engineering class and I'm not getting a 4.0 and I'm just getting a 3.0 or 2.5, I'm like everyone else. So they graduated, 50 people graduated in the same degree as me. What's the only difference between them and me? How I market myself, right? That's it. 
And if someone decides to pay them $65,000 a year or $75,000 a year, they might say, hey, you know what? We already hired somebody. Good luck. Now you're at your mom's house sleeping on the couch, living off of mom and dad, like what's for dinner? Versus someone like me who went, well, fuck it. Let me go get a job here. Before I graduate, let me talk talking to people in my profession and have connections. My son doesn't have to, is going is a computer engineer. I already has a job set up for him with the best engineering firm in the world, in the country, because guess what I do? I tell people what I need. I ask for it. I make sure that if I'm in an event, I was in an event for real estate and the number one real estate guy for the year, uh, Lakeem, he won engineer of the year. I met him and he's like, Jabbar, from social media, he talks to me like I know him. And then one day we meet up in person. He's like, Jabbar, hey, what's going on? And I said, yeah, you know, did I? I said, what do you do again? He said, oh, I'm an engineer. I just won McKen um, engineer of the year and da, da, da. And I'm like, bet. Let me put you in a group chat with my son who's going to school for mechanical engineering. So as you're marketing yourself and you start to go to the events and you start to learn things, you start to realize like the information is there for you. Like when you go to network and meet people, you have to have a thought of your process. Like, all right, I want to make 10 people. I want to get 10 business cards. I want to learn this and find out what people do. If someone tells me they do something like astronauts, they want to be an astronaut. I could go to YouTube, get a video, how to be an astronaut. Right. What are we doing in March? What is Elon Musk doing with his rockets? Oh, his rockets are successfully going to space. You could pay him $7,000 or $25,000. He'll fly you up to space. He'll come back down. Okay, cool. I can watch the process on YouTube. And now what I can do is go back to someone who's here and say, hey, Lakeem, uh, I heard this terminology. I didn't know what this word meant. But now you can go to AI and say, hey, tell me the process of just creating my own spaceship if I had a $20 million budget. In mm -hmm. AI, Gemini, or whatever ones you want to use, BART is now Gemini. Then you have OpenAI, who has their 4.52 Turbo. It's coming up with 5.0 now. All these things are moving with or without you. But if you're in school, you're learning the same shit from 200 years ago, 100 right. years ago, 1,000 right. years ago. Right. We don't change in the classroom and say, you know what? Everything's changing around you. We're going to change. By people that don't make money, by people that resent entrepreneurs making money because they feel like they're smart enough and they should be in control, but you don't produce anything, you know? So every time my daughter just graduated, I had to like, every time she came home, I had to re program her because she's being programmed by all these Marxist college professors, you know? I just hated me. Yeah. I used to tell them, well, how much, listen, even in eighth grade, I remember I was in eighth grade, not eighth grade, but let's say back in when I was in about, Whenever I was 14, I was working full time. I was working 20 hours a week and I worked full time in the summer. And some teacher argued with me about something. I said, how much money do you make? She's like, what? I said, what do you make, $32,000 a year? I, said, I make that. I make your salary and you're, you're hollering at me. I'm the one in the classroom that raises his hand. I'm the one in the classroom that answers all these dumb, dumb ass questions you ask us. And then now you're arguing with me and trying to get me, give me a sad face or something they were trying to do because this dumb ass here who doesn't, isn't trying to get an education beats me up after school, chasing me around. You're coming at the nerd, not the bully. Right. And I'm like, make it make sense. But you'll still be here in five or six years. But guess what I'll be? I'll be somewhere else. And then when I got to eighth grade, I tried to buy my eighth grade teacher's car. Mr. Cannon had a car. He was selling it for $4,500. I tried to buy it. My mom was like, you're too young to have a car. But I had a worker's license since I was 14. I'm like, so I can work with adults and rich people, but I can't buy my own car. But at 16, I had my own house. Mm -hmm. So like, my mindset was always thinking about the future, not the here and now, like what's going to be long term. So I always live in nice neighborhoods and nice places because I said, where you lay your head it has to be your peace, has to be your quiet. Right. Like in behind me, no one knows what this is, but somebody who has real money and has goes and buy furniture will know what it is. It's not flashy, but it goes all the way to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. But you can't get it anywhere. The table mm -hmm. that I'm on, you can't just buy it anywhere. Like I always tell people, people with money will see things in, in your video and go, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, that's somebody. You know what I mean? Like in your background, I see the books you have. Like, I know that you read those books, or at least looked at them. And I tell people every day I send out a video for the last seven years, every day a motivational video to BTS members. And they'll tell you, I've only missed one day. One day. And that wasn't the day I had my heart failure. It wasn't wow. the day I had heart failure. Okay. The day I had heart failure, guess what? I took the picture with the group. I was at the hospital. They said we're going to have surgery at 8 30 in the morning. I got up at 4 a.m. Boom, I posted my video to the group. I said, this might be my last post. I might not make it. Guess what? It was been fun. And the next day I posted a video. The day I messed up was, uh, I think it was a snow day. And I went to post a video and it didn't go through. And I didn't notice it because the clock had changed an hour ahead. 
and I didn't notice that the uh, thing didn't go through. And I posted the next day and they're like, Jabbar, you missed out. I said, oh, shit. But it was not that it mattered that I did it every day. It was consistently for seven years. Right, right. But Yeah, I, listen, I can attest to that. I've seen him. It's right. Incredible. It's amazing. So how I build and keep my network. I always say, happy New Year's, happy birthday, Thanksgiving, whatever it is. Oh, I'm sorry for your loss. On your social media, people will tell you about themselves. So I'm always constantly saying, damn, man, I, I heard your grandmother's sick. I'm sorry about that. It's natural to me. So it's not forced. I'm not trying to get something out of you from doing this. I'm trying to help people change their mindset. And it starts from your mindset. It starts from you saying, you know what? I got a real estate license, but I don't really talk about it much. I got a, I got a license. I got this $200,000. I haven't told anybody I have this $200,000 in my account. Who should I tell? Oh, I'm going to tell my uncle, my cousin, this person who has a BMW that I, that I think has money. But then when you ask the person, well, how much money do you have in your bank account? Oh man, I live check to check. That's who you're asking for advice because he bought the BMW and a Mercedes Benz. He's right. buying material things. He can't give you advice. When I talk to people, and I literally talk to people, and I just to people that have ten million in a bank account, thirty million in their bank account, three point seven nine million in their bank account. Hey Jabbar, put an offer in. The other day, maybe six months ago, a guy was like Jabbar, how much is the stuff? I said three million. He's like, offer him two point seven million, forty five day close, no contingencies. That's who I hang out and talk to. Right. I want to be able to be like, how much? <laughs> Here's my offer. Take it or leave it. But people, they want to see things. And I always tell people, you, sometimes you have to be flashy, you show things. And I'm like, material stuff. I got two refrigerators here. Mm -hmm. Right? Wine coolers. For what reason? Now they're just sitting here for no reason because someone was like, oh, you should have one in your bedroom. So I had one. I had a big house. I had it in my bedroom next to my thing. I had one. I don't even drink wine like that. <laughs> then I had one in another room as a guest room. And then I now it's just sitting here not being used because it was just an extra stupid luxury that cost, whether it's $500. And I start realizing after buying things that I don't need, it's like they're all in the garage now. Because subconsciously still, or five, seven years ago, let's say by now it was seven years ago, I was still trying to impress people that didn't matter. Right. And then I started to realize like, damn, I'm about to die. And none of those people that I was trying to impress are in here at the hospital. They all got jobs. They can't call their boss and say, hey, my friend's had a heart failure May 2nd. He might die. I need a day off. You know what they got to do? When I get off of work, Jabbar, I'll be there. Stay alive until I get there. Right, right. It, they went, got to work at 8 a.m., 9 a.m. Then they called me at their lunch break, 1 or 2 o'clock. Then they got off at 5. Then they came to the hospital to see me. Then they got to hurry up and get home because they got to get to take a shower, feed the kids, then go back to work. And I'm like, yo, I've never missed my son's any event because I had a job because I've from the time my son's been to school to now, I haven't had a job. Or for 16 plus years, haven't had a job because I realized how the job can control you. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a tool. And if you like what you do, keep doing it. But at right. any moment in time, they can fire you. At any moment in time, they can change their mind about you and say, you know what? We're cutting back. We're going to let you go. And you got to get that Cobra insurance. And that Cobra insurance is yeah. a yeah. bitch. I always tell people, look, you know, you can get fired for one or two reasons, any reason or no reason at all. Right. And so I view that as risky. That's, you know, that's more risky than me to having a business, you know, that, that somebody controls my life or it's like being a consultant, but you only have one client. And right? there's nothing wrong with it. Let's make this clear. Yeah. I used the job I had to get to where I am, but also you got to start to realize the people that are coaching you or talking to you, you got to say, well, at some point, damn, is the life they're living the life I want? Yes. That's exactly. what it is. It's not about the car they're driving. Right. Is the life they're living the life I want? And when I go to their social media or when I meet them in person, is or what they're saying true? And can I verify it? Can they tell me or other people say, Jabbar has helped me buy 17, 22 houses. He retired me. Yes. There's people around me that say, yeah, Jabbar, I bought all my houses from Jabbar. Lorenzo John Jackson can say, hey, Jabbar sold me all my quadruplexes, duplexes, and triplexes, and I can help my family. My wife doesn't have to work because of him. You know what I mean? There's certain things I could say and people are like, yeah, Jabbar helped me get this because I wanted people to be successful. And it's not about me making all the money. It's about the fact that if you're successful, you'll usually buy more from me because you are capable to buy more from me. Right. Versus if I sell you something and make $30,000 off of you and you don't have the profit you need to buy the next one, now you got to wait six months to a year before you buy another property. But what if I sold it to you and I only made 10 and that 20,000 allowed you to refi out 20 grand on your side and you use it to buy three more houses or two more houses? That's how I think long term.
Yeah. Let me ask you a question. So this is off. You test something. So they, my people know that sometimes when I'm talking, this is like free consulting for Curtis, but <laughs> the, um, uh, the question is, so you saw something about turnkey. Can you still be profitable with turnkey stuff in 2024? Yes. I just sold a lady a property for how much was it? A hundred? I think I sold it to her for a hundred. She's getting thirteen hundred a month, fourteen hundred dollars a month for it. It's huh. all the numbers game still. And and yeah. Section Eight went up in price, so there's a zone. They have zones now: zone one, two, three, four, and five. And then basically, what they're going to pay you in a three bedroom in this zone one is less than the two, then three to four to five. And then in those zones, you know that you're going to make. I think in certain Where, zones, and these weren't like I got to gut it out and redo it. This was. Just See, house, that, my that's left where I am. I my unique ability is, or is a lot of people like here like me that my unique my, my practical wealth does well, and you know where, and I really want to focus on that, but I need to be taking my profits and doing other stuff. I want cash flow. I want the tax write offs, but I and don't want to beat inflation. I don't want to beat. I got to keep you up with it. Not save to be rich. There's yeah, there's no, no strategy. Yeah, listen, the only yeah. formula is 72, 72 years. So oh, if right. you want to put a hundred thousand into something and wait seventy two years, <laughs> then you could be rich. Right, exactly. So if but it's seventy two years, and it has to be in some kind of vehicle that gives you interest rate on it. Yeah, some yeah. kind of interest rate, whether it's eight, seven, ten percent. So you still got to invest it. But if you just leave it in your bank account, which I right. tell everybody, I'm old enough to remember when gas was seventy five cents. Gas was 75 cents and they had penny candies. You used to go to the store and you could take 10 cents and get 10 different kids candy. When you had 25 cents, you were rich. You had 25 different candies. You were hyped for the rest of the day. Guess what? I went to the store the other day. I picked up a water bottle and it was $2.49. Yep. $2 for water. Right? Then I looked at something else and it was $3. On average, what you bring out the refrigerator is $3, no matter what you touch. Back when I was growing up, it was 99 cents, 75 cents, 50 cents, 49 cents, and 25 cents for a can of soda. So now what you people have to realize is that same money that you're saving, oh man, I got a hundred thousand dollars in the bank, can't buy the same shit that you used to buy. Right. It, it can't because inflation eats up the dollar. So your dollar that gave you uh, you know, 10 cents now, 10 dimes is now only giving you seven, seven dimes, 70 cents of value. It lost it because you have inflation rate of whether it's 6% or 5% a year, whatever it is, it goes right. up, it fluctuates, right? So you're buying less, you have less buying power. So if you're not buying something that can go up, like real estate, the income from real estate goes up every year. Your, your rent is $1,000 this year, next year is $1,000 and 50, 50. Then the next year is 1,100, then it's 1,200. You know what I mean? You can raise the rents to keep up with inflation while your debt is going down. That's the whole key about real estate. And you're paying for it, for it right? And someone else is paying for it. You're not even paying for it. And, you know, you don't pay tax on borrowed money. I mean, you know, I was in a luncheon one time with, um, or a conference with Tom Wilwright, uh, Kiyosaki's uh, CPA. Mm -hmm. And he says, this the tax code. Code is another word for map. No, I mean, map. Tax code is a, is a, is a map, but it's a treasure map, right? And he used to say that the government, the tax system is an incentive program to tell you what they want done. So what do they want done? The government's jobs. Who creates jobs? Business owners. They need housing. And they've already tried to do housing. So they incent entrepreneurs to provide safe, clean, affordable housing. They need energy and they need food. So if you will organize yourself to help the government get done what they want to get done, you will make money and minimize your, your taxation. And, and the uh, first thing you can do to make money is to save it. Warren Buffett, first rule, don't lose money. Second right. rule, don't lose money. Third rule, look at rule number one. Don't lose right. money. Don't lose money. Right. Yeah. If you can protect the money that comes in your door and keep it from going out the door, you can start slowly building up to whatever it is. And first things first, you have to know what you want. Right. Like people come to you, Jabbar, I want to be rich. That is not, that's not a goal. I right. get it. You want to be rich. How are you going to get there? How do you want to get there? What, how much money do you need to quit your job? How much money do you need to live a comfortable life? What is your current bills now? And what do you think your future bills are going to be? And you have to take your time to write it down, write a list of 10 or 12 and say, man, I would love to live in Florida. Well, how much does a house in Florida cost? What part of Florida or oh, Tampa? OK, well, a house in Tampa costs five hundred thousand dollars right now, which is somewhere around. 
four thousand dollars a month plus the taxes. Let's say five thousand a month. So okay, I need five houses bringing me twelve hundred dollars a month. How much does the houses cost me? Oh, it cost me a hundred grand. So how much does the first house that cost me a hundred grand to get me to the five to help me pay to live in Florida? Well, that hundred grand really equals twenty thousand dollars. Or I can do a burr strategy and at my first house, take the five percent down program, buy a triplex or a quadruplex, and now each unit is giving me say a thousand dollars a unit and I live in this one for free. So now I got my first one. I wait six months, I get my next one. I wait another six months, I get my next one. Boom. And I just keep building. So in the next five years, in the end of five years, I have enough income coming in that I can pay for my house in Florida. I give my properties to a property manager and now I'm living in Florida. See the definition of rich is just basically being able to do whatever the hell you want. That's right. It's not about saying, man, I, I need to be like puffy or I need to be like, you know, 50 cents. Some people have a certain desire to be a certain level and they just right. take, they keep repeating the process. They don't wake up and say, man, I just want to have a million dollars coming in every day. Well, that could be possible, but what's the first thing? What possibly can do it? Oh, I, um, e-commerce. I could get an e-commerce store, start off with $10,000. I get an e-commerce store and my e-commerce store is selling dog products. And now I'm selling dog bowls, dog, dog collars, dog swellers, dogs, feet pads, all these things that you can get from Alibaba. Alibaba ships it's the place that ships the product to you. They'll name it whatever you want and ship it to your customer um, called Albatross. And basically you get the difference of the money, which is $10 say the product costs $12, $2, you sell it for 12, they get their two, you make 10, you do that a hundred times a day, times seven days a week, and you pay for the Shopify store and you pay a little marketing for dollars. And now I can turn this into $100,000 a week, month, a day kind of product just from a little bit of money. But the first thing you got to learn is, okay, how much do I need to make to get to that level? And how much do I have to invest? And where am I at mentally? Am I mentally at that when $2,000 comes in this household, I spend $2,000 or I'm the type of person when 2000 comes in, I take 10% to my savings account, 10% to my investment account, and then the 80% I live off of to do what I normally do, pay my bills, whatever happens. But I'm building up that nest egg so that when I have enough in it that I can then reinvest it. That's why I said save, invest, and protect. And I protect it all by having a nice insurance plan or policy or an LLC, an incorp, an S corp, a C corp, a trust, a will, a management company to take in place to make sure that everything's running right. And all of it doesn't cost a million dollars to start. You just got to start. You just right. got to say, you know what? I got to be around the people that when I look online or I see them or I'm talking to people in their circle, they go, no, nah, Jabbar don't got a job. Jabbar hasn't had a job in a really long time. Nothing wrong with a job, but I get to choose to do what I want to do every day. Now, until it changes, until someone gives me some crazy offer, or I want something and I'm working. If I am working, I'll probably be working for a construction management company and managing a big portfolio because I'm using that money to buy my own portfolio. Right. Right. Like It's OK to step back. It's OK to be like, damn, you know what? Someone's giving me two hundred thousand dollars a year to manage properties. Well, I take that job. Because I'm just going to take the money and buy properties. Right. Right. Without the stress. And yeah, I mean. Listen, I'm gonna, cause I could talk to you all day long. We 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 got we just there's gonna be a part two. I'm a hint. There may be a program, a joint venture that works where we're going to actually, cause he's one of the few real estate agents. Cause you know what I'll do, Jabbar. I'll ask people. Listen, if I were to get clients together, could you show them how to create financial freedom using the asset class called real estate? Right. Yeah. And, and I'm not an agent. I'm more of, I had my license for 13 years. I, I dropped the license because I can't say certain things or do certain things with a license. Oh, okay. I know that. But okay. That's even better. So but you can, without start. a license, I can get properties and say, hey, I know your house is worth 100000 right? And I still tell the truth, but I'm only going to give you 45 for it. Mm -hmm. I'm not listening for 100 and then sitting there for six months waiting for you to take an offer. Or I'm the guy that comes and say, hey, will you take $45,000 in 30 days? And then I sell the product, sell it. I might sell it for 55 or 65,000 to my investors. Um, one thing I learned about having a license is like it, it comes with a lot of restrictions and things you can say or not say. I don't have to tell you what your house is worth. I just usually say, Hey, here's what I want to give you as an offer. Um, would you take 45? We just picked up a house for 35,000. The house after, if, after repair value is probably 140, 150. Mm hmm. So now we're going to go in there, clean it out. The clean out will be $3,000. The electrical and plumbing. So let's say the electrical will be 7,500. The plumbing will probably be around eight grand. The heating system will be around seven grand. The kitchen will be 
give or take eight grand. The bathroom will probably be 5,000. It's not a big house. It's like under a thousand square feet. The sheet rock, the whole house is seven, seven or six. To do the floors between $35 and $4,200. So let's say we're all in it for 70 grand. Boom, they'll cash flow and we'll make money. The guy agreed to $35,000. Or I'm, I have it for sale for $55 right now. So either way, whether we end up keeping it or we end up selling it, I don't. I didn't have to tell the guy that, hey, on the back end, it's worth $200,000. Right. Because no, I love it. Actually, I mean, I think it's see, because what the, the thing is that you said is key is you created financially independent people like the proof is in the pudding and that's that's the thing like uh, people say what do you do i you know i'm the defensive coordinator like i would view you as offense right mm. and i mean you talk about defense too because i you know i do it I, I say save protect leave a legacy liquidity and velocity so i just it's the same principles just a little bit of a different order but it's basically the same thing but the thing is, velocity is how do you, you know, one, because I always talk about your financial plan, what you want and why precedes the investment or the business plan. And then what are the tactics? What do you, how do you know when you got there? Is it because financial freedom is a capability, right? How much is, you know, what is the cash flow number? And then what asset do you want to work with? And then how many of those you need to become financially free? Like, I think you have to work that. That's what I try to do with people because they just want to jump right into the tactics. It's like, but because that's exciting. But, you know, Jabbar and I try to slow you down to speed you up, right? So that you can go into it with, you know, with some strategy because most people are not very strategic. And uh, so I, I, I've i got two courses in my head as we've been talking today. <laughs> but listen, tell them how to follow you because um, I, I appreciate you spending this time with me because uh, this has been about four years coming. So I, uh, <laughs> I'm i uh, I'm happy to, to, to get you on the line. But tell them how to find you, um, you know, how to follow what you're doing and, and um, give them your contact. So. Listen, I'm Googleable. I, you can Google me. I have enough information out in the world. It's Jabbar Fair with a J A B B A R F A I R W E A T H R. It's everywhere. I usually tell people this best advice get your name, own you. You know what I mean? I used to have work with Bar, it was funny.com, and I let it lapse. And then someone said, Oh, it's 800 bucks to get it back. I said, Well, I got Jabbar Fair with the.com already. So, you know what I mean? I have make money with Bar and I have all these other domain names. But the biggest thing is that you can go to my Instagram, my Facebook. I have TikTok and you can see what I'm doing. Usually I'm, I'm going live on Instagram to show people what I'm looking at a property or I post. I'm going to start posting more properties on my social media. I'm more than likely I text people and say, oh, I got this house for 35,000. Someone sent me a house today for 30,000, $35,000. They picked it up for 25. So, you know, and I'll tell people the truth. Listen, we got to make money. The only way we can continue to do business together or give you information for free is that we make money from selling a product or service. You have to be okay with doing that. If you go to the most successful people in the world, they pay a coach. Michael Jordan paid a coach. Right. Kobe Bryant had a coach. Everyone has a coach at a certain level to help them get to the next level, whatever that is. And you can't be afraid to send my money who actually helps you get out your situation. That's like right. we have to get away from, well, man, you want how much? And I used to tell people, I was, the other day I was at a car dealership and a guy that I help out with a lot of things, he, he was like, oh, bro, I got $25 for you. I'm like, I paid people 10 grand, $25,000 to be my coach. Right. And you sitting here talking about you got $25 for me. And it just couldn't get past the fact that I'm like, but the advice I gave you kept you from A, B, and C mistake. He's like, oh, I bought a house from you. Okay, cool. All right, that's how we're going to make money together. All right, no problem. But you got to spend with your your uh, your mentor. Yeah. So I would always buy whatever my mentor's product was. So um, click funnels. Russell Brunson has all the books. I would buy his books. I would buy um, Grant Cardone. I got all his programs. I would buy his programs. Ty Lopez, he had a program for real estate, which was a thousand hours a month. I paid the thousand hours a month to have his product because I wanted to see if, you know, did he what did he really know? Well, guess what? During the pandemic, Ty Lopez spent like sixty five million dollars buying um, Pier One. He bought Radio Shack. He bought a couple other companies. He, was, he bought the most companies during the pandemic than anybody in the world at that time. Yep. I because he was buying billion dollar companies for twenty million dollars. Pier one did billions of dollars a year. He bought them for $20 million. Radio Shack. Everyone in the world knew what a Radio Shack was in the United States. Well, everybody in the United States knew what a Radio Shack was. Yep. They were in every mall in every, every part of the United States, every state. He bought them. And he's buying them for their list. So 
let's, you know, we could talk about it forever. So let me get yeah. a, a <laughs> my Instagram, Jabbar Fairweather, two Bs. You'll see me everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. And I usually post whatever I'm doing, what I got going on. Um, and if you need any help with anything, just hit me up and say, hey, Jabbar, I, you know, I need help with this. I always tell people, come with me full. Don't come to me empty. I am not filling up your cup. If it's halfway, I'm good. Empty cups, I'm going to get you to YouTube. I'm going to tell you, make sure Curtis and you have Curtis's products you learn because I'm past the taking people by the hand and carrying them. If it's in, in a way, I should say this like this. You have to have an idea before you come to me. Mm -hmm. If you come to me and you have no idea, no clue what you want, I'm not that person. I'm always used to people saying to me, Jabbar, I want to make 15 grand, 50,000 a month. I want to buy single family homes. I want to buy duplexes, triplexes in Mount Airy, West Oak Lane, Germantown. I want to buy them in Philadelphia. I want to buy them in New Jersey. I want to buy them in Florida. I'm not the guy who you come to and say, I have no idea what I want to do. Right. Have a clue because I'm talking to people who have clues and know what they want to do. And the time that I spend with you takes away from the clients that actually know, hey, Jabbar, I got $4 million. I want to buy a 24 unit apartment building. What can we do? That 24 unit building, uh, $24 million or $2 million, whatever, pays me a $45,000 commission. So where am I going to spend most of my time? With the That's person. Sure. Person. If you're in the game and you're trying to get to the next level, really both of us, but probably more so him, right? Because I'm my job is to get you ready for him, right? I think. And uh, so that's what I do. I get people ready for, for to, to, to talk to you. And then I'm going to make sure they protect. I'm the protect guy, right? So listen, this has been awesome. But the biggest thing I've learned is that you have to decide really what you want and then find out who can help you get there and then figure out how you could be around that person. You yes. know, whether you take them to lunch, take them to dinner. A lot of times I just take people I want to learn from to dinner or lunch. Like, yo, let's have lunch at 40, 46th Street Grill. And then I invite other people. So now I have a group of six or seven people. This guy's worth 50 million. This guy's worth 100 million. This guy's worth 200 million. And they have two people in there that don't even have a pot to piss in. But because I wanted them to be surrounded by that person, and they're like, Jabbar, I really, really want help. Well, just sit here and shut up and listen. Don't right. say anything. Just right. sit here and listen. You invited me to one of those. And then, and I realized that because I, I had literally have four to seven appointments a day. I can't. And I uh, had a mentor say, you're too tightly packed. Like you need to loosen up your schedule because you can't grow working all the time. You know, and even I'm one of the top advisors in the industry. I, I, you know, it's like what I heard, just hearing you talk makes me think of 10X is usually two 2X. Like you don't grow 10 times by working harder. You actually have to get rid of 80% of what you're doing and then focus on. Listen, if you got my clients right now, I have a client who's worth easily 150. He doesn't have a will, doesn't have anything owns a lot of properties. He's old school. I asked him like, how do you not have a will? He's like, ah, my sons and my daughters will figure it out. It'll all go to my wife. And I'm like, that's not a plan, but he's old school. Right. And if I sit anyone next to him, right. And he uses you, he could write a check for $200,000 and it wouldn't even cross his radar. But if you're sitting here working at home for four hours, you know, with four hour break interviews, and you're talking to someone who's just getting started and they want to learn, they can't write you a check for 200000 Not all yeah. the time. Some people can. But this guy can write you a check for 200000 but then refer you to someone who can write you another check for 200000 See, that's what you always got to think about. Yeah. I, once I've caught on to why one of my friends, he's around um, 50 Cent, uh, Mayweather, and all these people with money, and I'm like, rappers. And he's like, I was like, why the hell are you around him? He's like, they have money. They don't know what to do with it. And I was like, what? He's like, they'll get $2 million in a check in the mail. They'll go buy another Bentley. He's like, I show them to go buy an apartment building. And then you get your money back, and then you can go buy the Bentley. Right. But on the gram, he looks, you know, he's doing this. He's, ah, oh, he's, you know, and he's he's dancing. But behind it is a brain that went, all these people have real money. So that caught on, like, well, I can hang out with poor people. I can hang out with people with money. I'm going to hang out with people with money. And there's nothing wrong with being poor. It's just if you don't have a poor mindset. All I care about is you don't have a poor mindset. If you come well, to me, poverty is a mentality. You can be broke. Broke is a temporary cash flow situation, but you don't want to be poor and, and yeah. think poor and be poor and, you know, have that mindset of, of poverty. Right. And I meet people who have very successful businesses, but don't know anything else. And I can't get them to go hang around other successful people because they don't feel comfortable because they don't yeah. feel like they're more, I'm like, you're more successful than 100 percent of the people in the room. You make way more money than everybody in the room, yeah. but they've never been surrounded by other people. And I said, so you have a bunch of people looking up to you. 
and you feel smart because you can tell them everything you know, and they go, oh my gosh. I'm like, but what if you walk into a room and there's a guy making a million dollars a month and he don't have to do anything other than just make sure that the bills get paid. He don't physically have to be there. He can go be in Italy. He could be in Rome. He goes to Mexico. He could be in Florida. He could be anywhere in the world. And all he got to do is go on his computer, look at um, one of the payment, uh, pay ADP, press a button and ADP agrees with everything and every, ADP pays all his people. Hmm. That's true freedom, right? Yeah. And all he does is looks at deals when he wants to, doesn't have to. And he started from the bottom. He had nothing when he started. He just kept compounding and compounding and reinvesting money back and back and back. That was all he did. I, I can do it. Listen, I got a new vision, right? Because I, you know, I always tell people, I always work to get in rooms where I'm the poorest, dumbest person there, you know, and uh, because I don't want to be comfortable. I need you to be uncomfortable because that's where growth happens, right? And you... You can't expand your own vision and that's, that, that's critical. So listen, thank you again, guys, like three master classes in this interview, we will have him back and go out there. You need to, if you've heard this, you need to go back, listen to it like again and get your notepad out. Make sure you follow him. And, um, Hey, thanks for listening to another episode of the practical wealth show. Thank you. You guys have a great one and make sure you actually take your time to get information and understand your point of view now shouldn't be your point of view in the next five years. You always should be evolving. Every year you should say, you know what? I make it a goal to do something different. I shouldn't, you shouldn't be touching the same laptop or something, whatever it is. And I'm just saying improve that 1% a day. The crazy thing before I let everybody go, the craziest thing is no matter how much money you think you need to make, there's someone who makes so much money and they still think they're broke. I remember a guy who was worth, it's two Indian guys, it's on YouTube somewhere. It was two brothers, the father was successful. And they got to the point that the brother was worth like $7 billion. It wasn't enough for him. He lost it all. He lost $7 billion. If you just leave it in the bank, you're making a million dollars a day or a month or whatever it is. Right. But he just kept, oh, it's not because he was competing against his brother and competing against everybody around him for no reason. So it was like he was just trying to impress and improve. And he has the biggest house building in India and all this. But it was like, yo, you know what? You didn't have a goal. You just had to keep going and keep going. Find your goals and your mark, your bookmarks and say, all right, here's my goal for this, this year. Here's my goal for next year. Here's my goal five years, 10 years. But also don't also realize to enjoy the journey. Because there's times when I think back when I had a credit card and I remember you could have five hours on your card back when I was fucked up. I had a credit card and I remember getting gas and I just put the card in, fill up the tank. And I knew if I only had five hours in this tank. And this card, it allowed me to fill up my gas tank and I could drive to properties and show them and make money. There's times that I was sleeping on my mom's couch for six months and I was, people were like, Jabbar, man, um, you know, and I was hanging out with people who made a shitload of money and they're like, I'm like, oh, I'm fucked up. I sleep on my mom's couch. And they're like, what? Yeah, I got, I'm getting divorced. My ex-wife lives in the house. She kicked me out. And, um, you know, I'm staying with my mom's because all my other properties had non-paying tenants in it. I had nowhere to go because all my tenants weren't paying me. So I had my mom's couch for six months. Right. <laughs> so I was property rich. Cash poor, right, right. M multi million millionaire in in properties, no money in the bank, because I'm paying for where she lives, her car, the, her her mortgage, everything else. But I'm sleeping on my mom's couch for six months. Mm. And I was telling people it never didn't affect how I treated or acted at all because no one knew because I was driving a new car. I could drive. I wore a suit and tie, and I was telling somebody like, you know how people can fake the funk until you make it. Well, I made it and then fake the funk after I made it because. I didn't understand that we have a down economy. I didn't know that shit goes up in waves. Every five to 10 years, shit goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. That's right. I'm not a communist. No one told me like, hey, this shit will be fucked up. If your tenant's not paying you, you should have a 5,000 reserve for every property. I didn't have a reserve for the properties. I literally just said, as I make the money, I spent the money. Make the money, spent the money. It was, it was like a turn dial and I was on it and I didn't know how to get off because no one had the financial education or anything to say, here's what you do in a good market, here's what you do in a bad market. But now I've been through the bad ups and downs and shit twists and turns. I can refer you to somebody who can go, hey, I, I have this money, I'm doing really well, what should I do with it? Before I'd be like, save it, put it in the bank. Well, if it sits in the bank, it starts to get spent by other people other than you, Christmas That's parties, right. parties right. <laughs> wedding gifts. You start to give wedding gifts that are a thousand dollars. You start giving uh, Valentine's gifts that are five grand, 15 grand. And you're not thinking because everything's going well, but you might need that 15 grand six months from now because interest rates went from uh, 3.75 to 
in six months. So now all your deals fell apart, shit crashed, it burned, and you're like, oh shit, no one's buying properties, no one's selling properties because the house and the properties are this way because interest rates should be low. And now it's like the shit went to hell in six months. But right. I'm still here. Right. Because I've been through it before. So I knew the relationships I had to double down on, the people who had cash, the people that were spending money, and the relationships were stronger because now I learned, like, even if I don't have no business with this guy. I should take him to lunch and hang out with him just to see what he's doing and maintain our relationship. Hey, let me, yo, let me take you to lunch. Just, just chill and talk about the Sixers, the Eagles, whatever's going on. Boom. That's part of the things you could take from this. Invite people to lunch or dinner because rich people like free lunch and free dinners. You say, yo, let me take you wherever you want to go. What's your favorite restaurant? They'll be like, oh yeah, Fr Del Frisco's. Okay, great. I just, what, what, what do you talk about? Anything you want to talk about. Yeah, listen, I, and you pay. Uh, one time I was, I was, uh, this was still when I was with Primerica, right? And it was this guy that, uh, he was an ex Air Force guy, real just cool guy, 6'4, Air Force pilot. He was making like half a million dollars a year, but he was making more than half of that. This is when I just still did securities and mutual funds and stuff like that. So he just had a steady business. So I was like, you know, and I wanted to get that part of my business together, the security side of my business. So I said, Rob, let me take you to lunch. And I paid and kept buying stuff and taking notes and taking notes. The next month, I made like, I don't know, it was like twelve, thirteen thousand dollars in, in investment commissions. And then that year I took my securities production up like eleven hundred percent. Cause I was really anal about my numbers, like the different sections of my business. Right, right. Because of the what I learned. The, 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 the opportunities were there, but I didn't understand it and I didn't have the confidence, you know, that where I didn't think I knew what I was doing. So I borrowed his confidence. He helped me identify. He helped me. I, I saw how he looked for it. He said he ran his primary business like a broker's firm. By between eight and noon, he needed X amount of dollars that he needed to do between 12 and one. He was really regimented and he was looking for money. Right. Because he was, you know, he's an investment guy. So the goal was AUM. My business doesn't work like that now. But what I saw was his mentality of how to work. Like, you know, I always tell people in business, party number one, always you got to serve people but make money. So I make sure that I have to be profitable every week. I lose, I do my PL weekly. I need to where where am I at? What's what's in the pipeline? Do I have it? What, what's oh. my 90 days of, of business pending? I mean, I know my numbers like, and people don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. So, so, so here's a book, right? So in this book, every page, the road self. Okay, wait, wait. Listen, every page of this book, it's in my um, Instagram bio. Look, Curtis, every yep. page is yep. highlighted. Yep. So I'm going to just stop randomly at a page, see what I highlighted. Uh, keep people stunned. Keep people limited. Uh, defective genes, genetic engineering, in the context of everything we have discussed so far, genes to, was to keep people from living in their potential. Do hard shit. Stick with it. Get the transfer, transfer, transformative results. Being first to becoming. I provide the tactics and strategies. Problem one, they're too scared to do hard shit. Problem two, they don't stick with it. Problem three, they implement and execute a flawed model from start. This is just a random page that I picked out. But what he when he wrote the book, he was basically talking about this guy does it was the top marketing guy in the world for the largest uh, newsletter. There's a newsletter that does like five billion dollars. I forgot, but he was the top writer for it. Um, it's in my um, it's in my uh, what's the name? It's in my um, what the hell is it? It's in my uh, bio, right? Wow, okay. The heroic wow. self: seven unconventional truths to turn your life into business and get paid to become your best self. Ryan Fletcher, founder of Story Athlete. And he basically just talks about self-love. Now our cup is full. We can pour into others. When I talk about you got to fill yourself up to pour into someone else, it's literally what you have to do mm -hmm. because you can't help somebody if you're drowning. Right. Biggest thing I tell people, if you're drown drowning, how can I help you? I'm already drowning. Now you put more weight on my back. I can't help you. But right. if I learn how to swim and I, whew, I can rescue you. But at first got to be have a strong foundation. And in the book, every page, I just started highlighting shit. I was like, damn. Because it was like, you become a hero based on your efforts, perseverance, not based on the place you finish. Becoming harder to kill mentally, physically, financially is the process. Well, I'm becoming harder to kill. Meaning mm -hmm. someone can't attack yeah. my person, I attack me. Yep. And it affects me and I don't do my work or I stop, I lose confidence in myself. Well, the whole book is like that. And I was just like, damn. Well, he was the number one copywriter for, 
I forgot the name of the damn company, but it's the number one financial newsletter. And then he started on his own. He went off his own and he has, he talks to help people become a better person mentally and physically. And he's like, it's a big thing that everything is uh, related with how your mental is, how your physical state in your environment. And the biggest thing is your environment. What are you feeding your brain? Like, what are you feeding your brain? And then who are you talking to every day? If you're talking to somebody who says, yo, on Friday, we're going to go party. Yeah, we're going to have this big party. We're going to get drunk. See you next Friday. Now, Saturday, right. you fucked up. You're drunk. You got a hangover. Sunday, you're in the house. You're just watching sports. And Monday, you go to work. I ain't got time to do this. And you're like, well, you had time on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right, right. Did you record what you did Friday for Saturday or Sunday? Well, no, I ain't got time to do that. Yes, you do. Ten years from now, they go, Jabbar, man. I remember when I seen you at the basketball courts while I was at work, man, and uh, the guy named is Bruce. Went to high school with him. He was at work. I was playing basketball. I lived downtown at a penthouse in Rittenhouse Square, and he said, that, that's made me change my life. I said, what you talking about? He said, that day I said, if Jabbar can do it, I can do it. And now Bruce doesn't have a job. Now Bruce is buying and fixing houses, and he has spends time with his wife and his son and has a great life. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. what he seen was, and I got told him, I'm not doing anything special. Like, this shit is... Burr strategy has been around 200, 300 years. Right. As long as uh, refinancing was around, it's been around. Or people could buy houses. It's been around. Real estate's been around for years. It's just a vehicle I use. Insurance has been around for years. Life insurance policies for years. But because we don't get the right information from the right educated people, we don't. We get an IDL and be like, oh yeah, I'm get an IUL. IUL, I think it's called uh, universal life policy, right? And you don't know how to structure it right, but then there's people who say it doesn't work, and there's people who say it does work. Then I came back to someone who says, well, by the time you get it to work or fill the policy up, you're dead. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> that that does make sense. I got to put how much money into it? Oh, I got to put a million dollars in it to get it to pay me this. Like, you got to get the right education. Got to get the right education. I mean, it's a lot. I mean, I'm not a, just on that, just not off that tangent. I'm not a huge fan, but because there's the, the, the pro, it's weighted to transfer the risk from the insurance company to the consumer. That's my big problem with it, right? But I Where didn't know that yeah. until I watched a two hour video and the guy broke it down. So you do you have $100,000 to open the account with? No. So then it doesn't work unless you can front load it so heavy that you, hit you can't screw it up, right? Because there's too many moving parts because it has an increasing cost of coverage because it's built on term insurance. Right. So term insurance gets more expensive every year. So and really, when you buy IUL, what you're doing is you're buying an option strategy. You're buying options against the S&P. And when the markets goes bad, the option prices are increasing. Right. And so even though we lived in the past, the, the, the top decade with no loss in the last 15 years, it's just barely eked out. It, like it didn't set the world on fire. Right. right. And I didn't All know that. that. I could get a whole life and, and, and still get you know, three, four, five percent tax free with no risk, and then take my risk and buy real estate or invest in my business, right? Because I just use insurance as a place to store cash. It's not a wealth building tool. It's just where you store your liquidity. Is you know, it's kind of how we teach it because and you want to make your money and your stuff and your thing. And you I need. have a whole life and I have a term, right? Me too. So <laughs> like, guess what? I didn't know why I should have any of this. I just got it. But what happened is the insurance person made more money on the IUL than he made on the whole life. So he pushed me for the IUL. And then yep. when I start going, let me, I should learn about this maybe. I went, oh shit, you get a higher commission from this than you get from this. So that's why he told me about this. The other thing is whoever telling you the story controls the narrative. Yeah. Yep. So if the narrative is, hey, this is going to pay you 7% to 10% a month. Look at it. Well, they ne- they didn't. They're not telling you in a bad market. Here's how it's going to perform. In a good yeah, market, they, they they illustrate great, right? But you gotta, but you know, but that's an illustration because in the same tone, they say, "Well, past performance is no guarantee of future performance." Future. You know what the hell does that mean? They say the same with mutual funds. So why are you always back testing? Because you can make up all whatever shit you want. And uh, so anyway, that's 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 you didn't trigger me now. I don't get so <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it in the next one. But you know what what happens also, people, when you have freedom, you can start to get educated. Yeah, you can start questioning the answers or the things that are people are giving you by having time to go and listen to a variable of different about of people talk about a topic or a subject 
Right. And you can go down a rabbit hole and be like, oh, now that makes sense. Yeah. Like when people well, present, I have read all these books behind me, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and I got some in my office and then and, and a bunch in my in my Kindle, right? So because I like to buy stuff. So I don't like trap taking three or four books with me on a plane when I gotta go somewhere. So I'll download it and put it in Kindle or Audible. So I'm a nerd. I'm a nerdy machine. Cause it's like people, are, how do you get all this stuff in? I don't know. You I if I, if I go to barbershop, I have a book, right? If I'm on a plane, I have a book. If I'm in the bathroom, I have a book. Listen, I mean, when you I know, drive in the car, I'm not listening to the damn radio. Yeah, you don't money. I mean, I radio don't make you no money, right? You listen. need audiobooks, podcasts, something, YouTube, where you're learning something because income follows value, right? So if you don't make any money, that's because you have not created value in the marketplace, right? And uh, that's what people don't realize. You know, if you want more money, serve more people. Solve and the only way you serve more people, people is become more valuable. Yes. That's more the valuable or yeah. Listen, I can talk about any topic that makes money. Yeah, me too. <laughs> From gold to diamonds to commodities. Because as I meet punks of mine who's very successful, I start asking questions like, how do you make your money? I start to go into it. It's like, oh, chicken feet? You sell chicken feet? Hot ash? What the hell is hot ash? Like things that I've never heard before that people do. And I'm like, oh, that's commodities. Oh, shit. Oil and gas, gold, silver, platinum. There's palladium there's the, the the stuff that goes for cobalt stuff that goes for your computers things that are go up and down in price and you you buy it at this price you sell it at this price and then i start to realize like damn i don't know as much as i think i know oh shit mm -hmm. i gotta start expanding my my network talking to people that are in there that go and say hey yeah jabbar i got you know 2.5 million pounds of gold i'm selling at this spot price is this and i'm like what the hell is the spot price mm -hmm. like you start to realize that there's so many ways to make money. You just have to find a way that works for you. But guess what always works for everybody? Insurance and real estate. Yep. <laughs> whether you do, whether you go to Ohio, Florida, Pennsylvania, Mississippi, whatever state, it works the same. And there's always some class you can get your store insurance, your real estate license, but it just teaches you the rules. It doesn't teach you how to make money. It doesn't teach you how to invest. People go, oh, I got my real estate license. Jabari. I'm like, so what? And they're telling me that supposed to mean anything to me. I'm like, what did it mean to me? That means that you can buy and sell real estate? I don't understand. Like, oh, no, I got my license. Okay, you just learned what land means. You just learned <laughs> how to read a cap rate. And don't and don't own a property. Don't own a house. And don't own a property. Yeah, yeah. But what, listen, we got to go. We got 144 <laughs> minutes, man. Listen, um, an hour and 44 minutes. It's definitely been a pleasure, man. And like I said, we're going to talk. And for everybody else, make sure you follow Curtis. And if you're reading this, you know me, my name is Jabbar Fairweather. I've been online since 1996. When everybody thought the internet was a scam, I was building websites for Lexus. And I had a great time, you know what I mean? Watching the development of Bitcoin, watching the development of uh, AI and technology has been great. And I'm always hungry to meet people that have opportunities that they want to tell me about. I'll listen to that, you know what I mean? Bring something to the table, I'm going to bring something to the table. And we can put the four legs together and build our own table. So let's there do that. Go. All right, let's do that. Guys, thanks. Thank you. And uh, guys, go out there and make it a profitable day. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Practical Wealth Show. We're out. Are you ready to take control of your financial future? Hi there. I'm Curtis May, and I'm here to help you achieve your financial goals. Do you want to be the customer bank or would you like to be the bank? Subscribe to our channel for regular updates valuable insights from experts in different fields you know the name of the game guys is cash flow okay you want you can't eat equity and our goal is to help you build we call it being a cash flow nair which is passive income twice your expenses outside of wall street where possible right which is it is quite possible and so if you're interested in learning more about our services, um, here is what I challenge you to do, or I invite you to do, I won't say challenge, is to take our financial freedom quiz. See where you are, okay? Don't wait any longer to take control of your financial future. Let's begin this journey together. <laughs>